And we'd like to welcome those of you who watch Green Bay in Minnesota. The Vikings winning 27 to 7. They play the Redskins at home in the playoffs as they begin next Saturday. We're at Texas Stadium and we extend again season's greetings. Emmett Smith with a lot at stake here. He would like very much, both personally and monetarily, to win the second rushing title of his career. Yeah, that's right. You mentioned monetarily. He does have an incentive. Someone said he didn't have any incentives to win the rushing title. He does have a monetary incentive. Aikman to Smith. Out of bounds, short of the first down. By Jim Morrissey. And that's where Emmett Smith is, is is so dangerous and I think so much a, a part of this cowboy offense the thing that makes the cowboy offense so dangerous you can hand it to him and he can lead the league in rushing or you can throw it to him and the guy can always make someone miss and make a big play for you so he's not only a threat on any play to run the ball but also a threat as a pass receiver actually it's a very basic offense very simple in fact but when you have those people like Aikman and Smith and Irvin and the rest of them, it becomes very complicated to stop it. Aikman to throw it. Batted backwards and almost intercepted by William Perry. That would have been an interesting thing to see William Perry, the refrigerator, to get one on this last day of the regular season and take that ball and rumble on down the sideline. But yeah, Aikman is trying to throw across the middle. He has the lane. I think it was McMichael, number 76, who was blocked on the line of scrimmage, knocked the ball up in the air, and William Perry almost had an interception. But look at McMichael. He was five yards away from the line of scrimmage. The rest of the rushers. Perry couldn't catch it, nor could he kick it. Nor could he pick it up. <laughs> He shot three air balls on one play. Saxon's punt is a low liner. It's a cowboy bounce. And down at about the 16-yard line by Kenneth Gann. So the Bears will take over. 42-yard punt by Saxon. Stadium, Will Fuhrer, opening quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Very, very little experience, not just in the pros, but anyway. Up front, Ozzie, Bortz, Fontenot, Thayer, and Van Horn. Keith Jennings, the tight end. Lewis and Muster open at the running backs with Davis and Morgan wide. Morgan comes left, Davis right. I don't think that the Cowboys really expected Fuhrer to start. I don't even know that the Cowboys know that he's left-handed. Wendell Davis. Enemy. Yeah, he just pushed right there. He just pushed Kevin Smith. The Cowboys, excellent defense. Haley, Maryland, Casillas, and Tolbert. Norton Jones and Vincent Smith, the linebackers. Kevin Smith and Larry Brown, the cornerbacks from Washington and Everett, the safety man. Look at this. Yeah, here it is. You see Kevin Smith there. Now watch. Wendell Davis just pushes him right there. And, and, he put his arms out like he didn't do it. He did it in front of everyone. Everyone saw that. And off is to Lewis. A loss of ER. And there's an exciting guy, Russell Maryland. One, because he's playing football, and that'll excite you. But two, he's from Chicago. And he says, no matter what, you know, you, you grow up someplace, you're a Bear fan, all your friends are Bear fan, fans, your dad's watching, you always talk about the Bears. And he said, Boys, so when I get a chance to play the Bears, I better play well. And when he got over the problems that he had in earlier in the season with his foot, he's been playing for the last half of the season like an all-pro. Yeah, he had two. He has a yeah, broken toe and a dislocated toe. But one day he looked down at his foot and the toe was looking back up at him. He knew he had a problem. Anderson is the lone setback. Fuhrer back to throw. Pass caught by the tight end, Keith Jennings. Not enough for a first down. Stopped by Norton. I'll tell you one thing about Fuhrer. He throws fastballs. Yes, he does. I mean, that ball doesn't stay in the air for a long time, and, and that's the secret in this league. The longer the ball stays in the air, the more chance you have for interceptions. 
Mike Ditka in conversation with his young quarterback. Actually, he's not that young. Coming back to Kevin Smith. It takes a cowboy bounce down at about midfield. No score yet, but the Cowboys take over in pretty good shape after that 31-yard punt by Gardaki. Of the Nash on a warm afternoon in Texas Stadium, the Cowboys ball just across the 50-yard line. No score as yet. Emmett Smith and Daryl Johnston behind Troy Aikman. Go on first down if he has time. Outside, that's a lateral to Smith. Just a couple of yards to Richard Fain, not Smith out of bounds. You know, uh, this was a when you're a rookie quarterback, you're going to get a lot of coaching. Mike Ditka on the left, Greg Landry on uh, Fuhrer's left, Johnny Rowland behind him. Then he goes to sit down. Mike Ditka follows him to the bench. Talk to him. Yeah, you know, any quarterback gets a lot of suggestions. Everyone telling him what to do. But when you're a rookie quarterback, start your first game, and you got everyone coaching. You. Second and eight. Downs tripped up by Morrison. Now, for an NFL update, let's send you back to New York and Greg Gumbel. Texas Stadium, those Chiefs are a strange team. Up one deep, well, one week, down the next. Different running backs. Yeah, sort of a mystery. But that Derek Thomas oh, always no looks like a great player. He's no mystery. That'll be enough for a first and picked up three. The other thing that amazes me about Emmett Smith is, is not only does he run, does he catch, we've seen him make some big blocks this year, but the guy always looks fresh. You know, you talk to him during the week, and he's bright-eyed and fresh and jumping around. You, you watch him play, and, and he never looks like the defense ever gets to him. You know what I mean? I know very well what you mean. One thing, he is a lot bigger than he appears to be. And very, very powerful. Powerful. Novacek had it, dropped it. That's a sight you're not going to see much. Jay Novacek dropping a pass. This is a sight you do see a lot, a defensive coach drawing upside down. That's the way you... That's the way, as a defensive coach, you got to stand and draw upside down. Put your guys on the bench, and they read the plays. They're doing this. We got to do this. Either you do that, or you're selling something. <laughs> yeah, they're probably just fi fi figuring out who this Will Furrier is. Yeah. Well, he played four plays against Cleveland, and that's the total of his NFL experience. That's a fair blitz. And that's Emmett Smith. Four-yard gain stopped by Morrissey again. Bring up third down. Yeah, this is one of the, the, the reasons that the Bears aren't as good as they used to be is because they don't have that dominant defense anymore. Remember when they were a great team? You couldn't do this. You couldn't block like this. You couldn't get holes like this. You wouldn't have running lanes like this. You just about couldn't block number 72. No, and now and now they're blocking him. Now they're pushing him around. And they lost a lot of great players on defense, and they didn't replace him with great players. And they're losing another great one after today. Singletary. Aikman intended for Kelvin Martin incomplete. Aikman's pass. I'll tell you one good one that they're going to have, though, is right in the middle of things down there. And that's uh, Alonzo Spellman. I mean, this guy is a big guy. He weighs 285 pounds. Watch him here. He has 5% body fat. I mean, he is a big guy who weighs 285 pounds, and he's skinny. And this guy is going to be a player. I mean, he's only a rookie, but in a couple of years, this guy has a chance to be a dominant player. You get him down, he kicks you. They're going to go for this on fourth in about six. Here comes the Bear Blitz again. Aikman buying time. And they didn't get a first down. I, I, I think they figured they was too far for a field goal. They didn't want to uh, punt. 
But I'll tell you, did their left tackle, Mark Tuane, pick off a blitz? If you want to see someone pick off a blitz, watch 71 at the top. Doink! That is the end of the line. And look at him. He's ready for somebody else. Whoever else wants it. You want some action? Come on. Nothing, nothing. The Bears and the Cowboys. 7.56 left to play. In the first quarter, yesterday's finals, New Orleans shut out the Jets. The Raiders came back to beat Washington, but Washington will be in the playoffs against Minnesota next week. First and ten Bears. 35. Sure. Outside. Anthony Morgan. And again, for the NFL update, let's send you back to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Pat, at Foxborough, Pete Stoyanovich from 35 yards out kicks the game winner for Miami in overtime, 16-13. Miami wins the AFC East if Buffalo loses at Houston tonight, Pat. No score in the first quarter here. Bear first down. A bear second down. Beg your pardon, about a yard to go for a first. The one thing that was impressive there, the... The Cowboys came on a blitz against a rookie quarterback. The Bears picked it up and Fuhrer completed a pass. Muster, the ball carrier, picked up a couple. Stopped by Benson and Smith. You know, yesterday when we were talking to Jimmy Johnson, he said that we may do more blitzing because it's the it's the last game of the season. Uh, you know, we've already clinched the playoffs. We got the home field. And he said, we may need blitzing just to get our defense fired up. He said, because he doesn't intend, and he's always thinking ahead of things like that. He didn't think his team would come into this game real fired up. So he said, we may have to fire him up, and the way to do it is to blitz more than we normally would. Then you get a rookie quarterback, then that gives you a double reason to do it. Fuhrer chased and down by Casillas. There were a lot of people, particularly here, that thought he should go to the Pro Bowl. Well, here he is. Let's watch Tony Casillas here. And we know that, you know, as you say, the Cowboys are the number one defense in the league and didn't have anyone in the Pro Bowl. You see, once he gets this outside arm inside the guard, then he has a free run to the quarterback. You want to get your outside arm inside his arm. And once you do that, there's nothing he can do. Because yeah, Tony is a strong and quick guy. Second down, Lewis is the lone setback this time. Fuhrer calls it fair timeout. Nothing. Second down for the Bears. Second and 18. Kelly Blackwell was the move man. Fuhrer. One hop, not his best. Uh, yeah, Fuhrer didn't play a lot of football. He uh, he went to Pullman High School. Right. Rosenbaugh, the quarterback for the uh, uh, Phoenix Cardinals, was the quarterback there. So he just played his senior year. Then he went to Virginia Union, uh, which is well, not Virginia Union, it was Union uh, Fork Union. Yeah, Fork Union, which was a prep school, and played there. For a couple of games then he went to Virginia Tech and so he really hasn't played a lot of football Morgan's in motion pass deflected rolling flag is down or an object is down not a flag Let's see what happened. Gordon McCarter is the referee. Well, like I said, I think it was just a pass rush. The, the Cowboys didn't know that Fuhrer was going to start. They find out they got a rookie here. Jimmy Johnson said he wants to fire his defense up. He's going to blitz more. He does exactly that. He blitzes more. Darren Woodson came from the left side. No one blocked him at all. He was the first guy that hit Fuhrer. Dardaki, under pressure, gets off a low end-over-end -end punt. That bounces. Hit a bear player at about the 43-yard line of Dallas. Dardaki, left-footed. 
has had trouble with the pressure from a Dallas rush, something they haven't been doing of late. 33 yard kick, 520 left in the first quarter. No score yet. You know, one thing about that Cowboy defense, that was Darren Woodson that came in on the pass rush. It seems like, you know, Darren Woodson isn't a starter and Kenneth Gant isn't a starter. They're two young safeties and they seem to be in there a heck of a lot because one of the best things that Cowboy defense does is play nickel defense. In fact, the Cowboys say we look for reasons to get our nickel in there. Houston in motion, Emmett Smith with the ball. Good pursuit by the Bears. Limit Emmett Smith to just three yards. Those two guys you were talking Emmett about, Smith, Woodson and Gant, just a matter of time until they are regulars on the defense because yeah. they're both are very talented and make things happen. In fact, uh, Jimmy Johnson was saying yesterday if he knew that Darren Woodson was going to be as good as he was, in fact, he was a linebacker in college and made him a safety. If he knew he was going to be as good as he was, he would have played him more in training camp and he'd be a starter this year. He's about 215. And that's what most teams are looking for now, those big safety men. That's to Johnston. And up for a first down. Wrestled down by Morrissey. Yeah, one thing is we see this, we're, you know, the, the Cowboys have good pass protection. They've had good pass protection all year. The one thing they don't want to do is go into this last game and get Troy Aikman knocked around too much. That's Chris Zorich. Who hit him just as he let it go, and now that's what Jimmy Johnson is complaining about. He yeah, yeah, after I, he let it go. That's what he's saying, and he wants to protect Troy Aikman. In fact, I think Troy Aikman will probably play at least a half, but we're going to see Steve Berline in, a, in part of this game today. And there's another story. Aikman. Irvin. And again, just as he threw it, or just after he threw it, he was hit. That time it was by Richard Dent. Zorich to play before Dent on that time. They have pretty good pass protection, but it's not real solid. There's always someone around there. You see, that this is a ball. He had to throw that. He threw it a little early, made it a little outside, and a little behind Irvin. But Richard Dent was the guy that made him throw it that way. Richard Dent, one of those guys who when certain conditions are okay, can still really bring it to the quarterback. Draw play, Emmett Smith. First down. A gain of 12 for Emmett Smith. Morrissey made the stop. You know, in this play, you're gonna see they're gonna here's Dent here. Now what they're going to do is they're going to get him, try and get him up the field on a draw, then they're going to come right back into this hole. That, that's what you do with a pass rush. You try and get him up the field, get him in this position, collapse this side, and then you get that running hole on a little delay or a draw. That gives Emmett Smith 36 yards for today. First down, Cowboys. Smith gets another catch. Got seven on that carry, so he's creeping up on Barry Foster. And the other thing about Emmett Smith, he always thanks his offensive line. Uh, last year, remember, Emmett Smith gave all his offensive linemen yeah, Rolexes. This this year, he's given them all airplane trips to any place they want to go. Mike Singletary is the bear who remains down on the field. And we know today is Mike Singletary's last game. We've Talked to him on the bus today just before he went into into dress and and he was really you know he's not thinking about last game or last game this and he's just playing it the way he has for 12 years there's just one way to play football you get ready for the game and you go out and play and you don't see that sight very often in those 12 years you haven't seen Mike Singletary come off the field very often not many times. And when you been, consider where he plays in the middle like that, every play is full of action. He's been an inspiration to a lot of people, players and non-players. Outside to Darrell Johnson. Down at about the Bear 15 by Donnell Wolford and Mark Carrier. Gain of 12. 
Yeah, that's this play seems to work all the time. The bootleg play. You see where you fake to a back, you fake to Emmett Smith going to the left, then you bootleg out to the right and you find a tight end, or in this case, a fullback. In the case of Daryl Johnston, hit him with the ball. But the bootleg <laughs> seems to be a pass that is darn near 80 or 90 percent completed this year. Always open, it seems. Alfredo Roberts. The second of the Cowboys' tight ends is down. The Cowboys only have two tight ends. They were using a lot more of the two tight ends at the same time today. Final scores. Minnesota knocked Green Bay out of the playoffs with that victory. Kansas City into the playoffs as a result of beating Denver. Miami put some pressure on Buffalo. Played Houston tonight. But their overtime win over New England, Philadelphia, already in the playoffs, beat the Giants. Pittsburgh, already in the play playoffs, beat Cleveland. And Indianapolis, over Cincinnati. Now, as you were saying, Philadelphia next week uh, on Sunday, we're going to do that game. Uh, Philadelphia and the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans. Boy, that's going to be a heck of a weekend Whoa. down there. You got the Sugar Bowl one night. You got a New Year's Eve in there somewhere. And the partying and stuff. And then you got the Philadelphia Eagles that are always tough playing the New Orleans Saints in a wild card game. That's going to be a good weekend to play defense. Yep, going to be a good weekend for football, good weekend for hitting, especially when those Eagles are involved. And yeah, I think that you, know, you always say, do the Eagles have a chance? You know, in fighting, they have a term in boxing, it's called a puncher's chance. And to me, the Eagles are that kind of football team that they have a puncher's chance because they have a strong defense. Alfredo Roberts. He wants to get up, I think. And they're telling him, don't move. Yeah, he, looked, he tried to get up a couple times, like he was trying to get his bearings and telling him something. One thing in the National Football League and all football that when someone goes down, they want to make sure everything is okay before they move anyone. Emmett Smith looking with concern at Alfredo. Yeah, they're bringing in the uh, the golf cart now, so they aren't going to take any chances here. They're going to use all the precautions. Well, that's that's pretty good sign right there. If limping like that can be a good sign. There's Nate Newton there that made the Pro Bowl this year. Alfredo Roberts, of course, the player that they're taking off there. Back up tight end. Big Nate was was happy. Uh, you know, he's had a bad uh, a bad knee all year and played with it and made the Pro Bowl. Alfredo. Did manage a little bit of a smile, so if injuries can be encouraging, that one was. And there's the Pro Bowl selection for the Cowboys. You see Emmett Smith, Jay Novacek are the starters. Aikman, Irvin, Newton, and Stepnoski made the team. There's a lot of talk here in, in Dallas that their defense, it's ironic, is number one in the league and didn't have one player make the Pro Bowl. Deep is Emmett Smith. Aikman just did get rid of it. Hit just as he let it go. Aikman's pass. You know, that's the thing that Aikman's has happened to him today. He's getting rid of the ball, but there's always someone hitting him, just as you said, just as he threw the ball. And again, that time it was Richard Dent. The pass protection is pretty good, but it's not solid where they're getting everyone. There's always been a guy, whether it's a Zorich one time, McMichael hit him one time, and Dent hit him a couple times. There's always one guy that seems to be picking away at Troy Aikman. So it brings up second and ten. Aikman's five out of ten. Johnston again in motion. And it's Smith. Shook one tackler and got down to the ten. Sean Gale pinned him down again at four. 
Yeah, that's one of those good news, bad news. Good news is you've clinched everything. You don't have to play everyone. And, but the bad news is that you have to go for a record, which is also the good news. And the bad news is you have to stay in there to do it. But if you're a player, you should want to play. I mean, I've never felt that they should ever get to the point where someone has to have a reason to win or someone says, oh, geez, poor Emmett Smith has to play. Anytime you use that, there's something wrong with this game. Eggman, quick. To Harper, who juggled it momentarily and then dropped it, and it was almost picked off, but incomplete after all that. A bear blitz put again the pressure on Aikman. Yeah, they're coming after him. Now, that looked like it was a bad throw because Harper was running the slant to the inside, and you want to do two things. You want to lead the guy in a little and keep the ball down. Aikman did two things that weren't very good. He threw it high and behind him. And he got that chin again. It seems like every year, Troy Aikman splits his chin open. A couple of times. Elliot, 21, 28 yards away, no good. Somebody got a hand on it, but I don't think it was high enough to begin with. Yeah, it's interesting. Jimmy Johnson was saying yesterday, the thing I don't want to do is, is play a sloppy game and go flopping into the playoffs. And I think so far the Cowboys have started off a little sloppy. And if they keep playing like this, they're going to go flopping into the playoffs. Right. Now, that was tipped or knocked down, but the other thing was low. that was a low kick. Oh, yeah. It was James Williams that uh, hit the ball, but I think that ball was just hit right into Williams. I don't think it would have been good anyway. No, that's like something, you know, you try and get something up in the air, and it doesn't go in the air. I mean, you have to get the ball up higher than Williams' hand was on that play. So still no score as the Bears take over. A couple of yards, three perhaps, not like Smith and Jones. Brad Muster was telling us last night, it's interesting, he said Will Fuhrer, of course, the rookie quarterback, he said he gets in the huddle, and before he calls a play, he says, play. He said, just like, well, what else is there? He said, what are you going to say, joke? Order dinner? Yeah. Why are we here? Yeah. He gets down on one knee is the other thing. I never like, I always like the quarterback to stand up when he calls a play, but he gets down on his knee and he goes, play. And then everyone knows the play's coming. But what else would come when you're in a huddle? Neil Anderson. No, I beg your pardon. Darren Lewis. Again, there. Gain five. Tony Tolbert tripped him up. Anderson has seen action on passing downs, and that's about it. Third down, two. That's the end of the first quarter with the score Dallas nothing and the Bears nothing. Charles Haley is a cowboy in the left. Neil Anderson is a bear in the right. And Haley, no matter what situation, always has getting on some in the locker room. Yesterday he was yelling at me. He said, tell these, these defensive backs what DB means. To tell him what DB means. I, I, I wouldn't say anything. He said it means dumb bunch. Tell him it means dumb bunch. You're outside to Keith Jennings, the tight end. Seven yard gain stopped by Everett with an assist from Russell Maryland. You're as fast First quarter statistics Dallas has five first downs. 46 on the ground, 32 in the air. No turnovers so far, but the time of possession goes to Dallas. No score, however. And the thing that I can think, uh, you know, I think could the Cowboys is that Troy Aikman really hasn't looked sharp. Uh, uh, their pass protection hasn't been sharp. And like Jimmy Johnson didn't want, they're a little sloppy and a little flopping out there. Durer gets it outside to Anthony Morgan. Pick up of six. Stop by Larry Brown and Ken Norton. You know, Fuhrer does have confidence. You know, when we talked yeah. to him last night, he had confidence. I watched him here in the pregame warm-up, and, you know, he didn't have any of those things that 
you know, make you say that Dizzy looks like he's nervous or he looks like he's excited or he looks like he's scared. He doesn't look like any of those things. He looks uh, pretty confident for a guy, whether he's a rookie or, or not. When he met you, he said, nice to meet you, sir. Yeah, and, uh, well, I, I was hoping he wouldn't say that to me, but he did. Nice yeah. to meet you, sir. I said, well, we don't need too many of those sirs in here. Lewis. That one took a little too long in the backfield to get too much. Larry Brown knocked him out of bounds. Well, Lewis ran into Fuhrer, and then Fuhrer kind of helped Lewis. him and gave him a little push. Watch this. This is a little mix-up here. Fuhrer starts out, and he's going to hand it to Darren Lewis. Here he, he just Fuhrer runs down. into him, so Fuhrer takes him and just pushes him that way with his right hand. Okay, here, boom, go that way. You've got the ball, sir. <laughs> there he gives him a little push and sends him out there on his way. Santa Claus, you give a guy a present and then send him on his way. Santa Claus goes with his reindeer. Third and about two. Fuhrer under pressure gets rid of it. Incomplete, good coverage. Anthony Morgan was the intended receiver, and Larry Brown right with him. As you said, that was real good coverage by Larry Brown. He was right there, but it was also good by Morgan of not having that ball intercepted. Again, the blitz is picked up. They do a pretty good job of giving Will Furr time to find Morgan here. I think Morgan does a good job of fighting here and knocking that ball. He went from offense to defense. Gardaki has some time this time, and it shows. Good kick. Melvin Martin signals fair catch at the 13. So still no score. 43-yard punt this time. So we have 12.47 left in the first half. Will Fuhrer. Troy Aikman. And Mike Ditka really had high praises for Aikman last night after watching him play in the previous weeks on film. Or on tape, I should say. Emmett Smith. Struggles to the left side, picked up three. Yeah, I think you may see the future of the Bears here. They have Alfredo, uh, uh, Alonzo Spellman is now playing left end. Uh, Armstrong is out, and Zorich is playing for Perry. So I know when we talked to Mike Ditka last night, he thought that his lines, his defensive line, was Spellman and uh, Zorich and those guys were going to be good at the offensive line. He felt he needed help in other areas. By the way, Singletary is back playing middle linebacker and made a good play then. His intensity certainly hasn't changed. Up to play the first and the last, and everyone in the middle is the Aikman. Johnson, outside the 20. It'll bring up third down, stopped by Singletary. The other thing about Singletary is we know what he does against the run and the pass, but watch him at the end he always uncoils here he's going to come across and he's going to tackle johnston but he just doesn't wrap his arms and take him down watch that explosion i mean you explode that shoulder in and that's the end of it and then you wrap him up some guys just wrap him up i mean singletary brings his whole load boom into you then wraps you up and has for 12 great years well you think about the great players that the bears have had at that Position one of them next to us in the radio booth, Big Butkus. Before that, Bill George. Okay. Over the middle to Irvin. That should be enough for first to gain a four. But you're right, the Cowboys just don't look. There's Dick Butkus. They just don't look as intense as they have, as intense as he does. No, well, he looks intense right here. You look at a linebacker, always has that different look in his eyes. You look at that look. The guy's up there now. He's not He's not hitting anyone. But Dick, but Dick Butkus always wore that 51 right here, was always ready to hit someone, and he looks like he still is. The guy right there behind him was a pretty good hitter, too. In fact, he just backed out behind the thing. That's Gary, Gary Fenson. Aikman going deep. That's intended by Harper. The coverage is good. It's incomplete. Daniel will 
Wolford back there with him. Yeah, you know, when we were talking to Troy Aikman yesterday, he said an interesting thing. Ask him how the week went in the game and all that stuff, and he said, "Well, to be honest with you, he said hey, I really didn't prepare for this one the way I have the rest of the games." And that's what you have to like about Troy Aikman. I mean, he, very you know, honest. It's like the you know the play in the Redskin game. You know, a lot of people say it was an incomplete pass or not. He said, "Hey, it's a play. We lost." The guy said, I didn't prepare like I did the rest of the time. That's the way he is. Intended for Nova. I think that Jimmy Johnson really has to be seething because you know, he, he knew that you know this can't do anything, but it can win 13 games more than any Cowboy team has any, ever won. He could do that today. But the most important thing to him was to not be sloppy. And I... You know, he's he's a neat freak, Jimmy Johnson is. And I think uh, being sloppy to him means incomplete passes, someone knocking your quarterback down, all these little things that the Cowboys are doing. A neat freak, I like that. <laughs> he is. Blitz coming. Aikman read it to Irvin. Close to first down yardage. Nine yard pickup. Not enough. This is where Irvin is so good because he, you know, he has such a feel, can catch, can run. But the other thing, he's a big guy, and he knows how to use his body. Now, an end becomes a big guy once he gets by the defensive lineman and the linebacker. If an end, Irvin runs into the line, you're not a big guy. Running into the linebackers, you're not a big guy. When you get into secondary, you become a big guy. Saxon back to punt it. Wolford back deep to the Bears. Level by Kenneth Gant. Watch him. Kenneth Gant better give us the shark. He'll give the shark somewhere in here. Shark didn't bite. Kenneth Gant there, and no wonder he didn't give a shark. After he hit Wolford's helmet, he didn't know where he was. He, he was goofy there. He was drifting in the deep water. <laughs> he started to go to the shark, and then he kind of went, whoa! Here's Will Fuhrer to Morgan. 17-yard pickup, stopped by Everett. The only problem Fuhrer's having is with that mouthpiece. He has to take it in so he has to take it out to call the play so he doesn't have it where it's holding on anything you got to put it on a string or something so he got the mouthpiece in the hand then he got the plays on the wrist on the right wrist then he gets down so he has to call the play off the wristband then you got to keep the mouthpiece in then you put the mouthpiece in but then you better worry you better not have to call an audible when you get up to the line of scrimmage Lost a yard. Stopped by Jim Jeffcoat. There's an amazing story. Hey, you know, it's it's interesting how well Jim Jeffcoat is is playing. Uh, you know, the last, well, since Jimmy Johnson and his group have come in here, they've been trying to cut Jim Jeffcoat. And they said, you know, they keep putting him down, and then he doesn't start. Then they bring in Charles Haley. And you just keep stirring up the soup and his head keeps popping up <laughs> what they say. say he just keeps playing and getting better and you don't get rid of him plays either side right now he's replacing Haley Lewis stop by Benson Smith okay. someone else that uh, Jimmy Johnson was telling us he wanted to see a little bit more of Benson Smith that's right. They don't play. The linebackers on this Cowboy defense are really not a big part of what they do. In fact, Robert Jones, their rookie middle linebacker, didn't even dress last week against the Atlanta Falcons. And they don't play a lot. Like, now they're in nickel. They only have one linebacker in there. You can see there's Robert Jones on the sideline. And this is where they like Darren Woodson and Kenneth Gant. Like they say, any excuse to get nickel in there, and they really play this well. One linebacker is Norton. 
Here's Fury. Batted down by the big cat, Leon Lett. And another one of those success stories on this Cowboy team. Yeah, Leon Lett, they got him out of Emporia State. Like they didn't even see him play football. They saw him go the length of a basketball court and dunk the basketball. Someone told Jimmy Johnson that. Jimmy says, give him a scholarship. That big that can do that, Gardaki punts. And he is going to be a dominant defensive lineman in this league. That's an excellent punt. Martin got some room and gets it out of bounds at the 15. One block. But the Bears in good coverage shut him down after that. 7-0-1 left. No score at Texas Stadium. Pat Summerall with John Madden. 7-0-1 left to play in the first half. William Perry back in the defensive front for the Bears. No score. Well, they also have Trace Armstrong back in there now. They took both Armstrong and Perry out in the last series. And I think they're just alternating their defensive linemen today. Emmett Smith. To the 30. John Roper for the ride. Finally got him down after a gain of 15. I'll tell you, big Kevin Gogan right here. We're going to get a good block right here on, on the refrigerator Perry. And then Emmett Smith is going to take the ball right in that hole. See, it starts off as a double team. Then Gogan comes off on the linebacker. And when you get a guard like Gogan, who weighs about 325 pounds, moving like that, starting on a double team, and then coming up on a linebacker, your running back is going to get what he needs a lot quicker. That's good work by Gogan. Here's Smith again. Breaks into the secondary, got about seven. Carrier, the safety man, made the stop. And that was good work by big Kevin Gogan again. That time he caught Perry, though, on a stunt. Perry was kind of going to his right, and Gogan just takes him out. Watch Gogan here. Perry kind of starts this way. Boom, he goes there, and the ball is going to come right in there. For the second time, you see him start to the outside. They start on a little double team. Knock William Perry way out, about five yards out. And that's what gave Emmett Smith the hole. And Stepnoski came off and blocked Singletary after they began that double team. Good coverage this time. Flag on the play. That's how good it was. Another one. Wolford. And that's the first penalty of the game. Michael Irvin saying, hey. Wolford was arguing it wasn't him, and Irvin was arguing it wasn't him. There it is right here. Now, Irvin starts to the inside, and I don't think that's a penalty on anyone. I don't Wolford either. just cut him off, and he was going for the ball, which is a defensive back right, and Irvin didn't do anything. Pass interference, number 21 on the defense. Automatic first down. That looked like a good play. Yeah, that's a good play. If a defensive back, if a corner can't do that, he can't play. And you have to let him do that. I mean, he got a good jump. He cut Irvin off. He just ran in there. There's nothing wrong with that. That is a bad call. And it's tough enough to be corner and play man-to-man. -man. You're out there man-to-man. -man. You're playing Michael Irvin, one of the best receivers in football. And if you can't cut him off and do what Wilford did, then you can't play. Just heard the announcement to the crowd that Emmett Smith had set a new cowboy record. Here he is again. Breaks away from one man, is finally wrestled down by Roper. All that for a gain of a yard. Well, you know, those great running backs do a lot of those. They, they, they give a lot of effort, and sometimes they only gain a yard or two, and they're their best runs. You can think of Thurman Thomas doing some of that, Barry Sanders having some great two yard runs. and. Emmett Smith is also in that category and when you're a great running back like those you're going to have great runs for a, a lot of different distances. And it's kind of shocking to sit and talk to him as good as he is and ask him how old he is and he says 23. And the last year of the contract. Right. Incomplete and a flag down. Harper, the intended receiver, covered by Donnell Wolford. Gordon McCarter, again the referee. 
Yeah, they, you know, they called that one on Wolford that really wasn't a penalty, and sometimes that'll take a little confidence out of you. Now he's had two. Pass interference, number 21 defense, automatic first down. The first one was with Mike Lerman. That time he was covering Alvin Harper. And we'll see here, again, he had that right arm in there. If they call anything, it had to be that he had the left hand on his body. But again, that looks like pretty good coverage to me. I, I, like I say, you can't play in this league if you can't do those things. I mean, I know they want the offense to do well and they want to help the offense, but doggone it, you can't take everything away from the defense. Emmett Smith hit right at the line of scrimmage by Richard Dent. Who waves over to Jimmy Johnson for some reason. There's Steve yeah, Burline standing. Alongside the coach. Well, Richard Dent does that. You know, there used to be a time when guys used to believe that Richard Dent oh, Richard was Dent. just a pass rusher and they thought they could run right at him. And then when he would make a play when they'd run right at him, he would turn to the bench and say, Hey, you can't do that. Now, of course, after he's been in the league 10 years and Pro Bowls and everything, I don't know that he does that as much as he used to. Second down and eight. Outside the Emmett Smith. Just a pretty good hit, but he gets up very quickly. Singletary and Morrissey. Did you see Emmett Smith, though? He didn't even look at Singletary. No. He took that hit. And one thing about running backs and guys that get hit, you don't acknowledge the hit. I mean, Singletary really unloaded on him. Emmett Smith just gets up, and he doesn't even look back. He doesn't look at Singletary. He doesn't look at anyone. He just goes right back to the huddle. I'll get up before you do. Yeah, right. I think... I think average players talk a lot. I think great players just go back to the huddle like a great fighter going back to his corner. Third down, and Smith has got the first down and more at about the 11. A gain of 11. They caught him in a blitz back. The strong safety, Sean Gale, was coming on a blitz, number 23. He was free. They didn't block him, and Emmett Smith, again, with his quickness and so on, just runs right by him. What Sean Gale comes Emmett right Smith. there. He's free. He runs right by it. Emmett Smith sees him, goes to the right side, makes a little move here, a little move there, and I'll tell you, he is going after this rushing record today. 15 carries for 87 yards. He still needs 22. I would bet that he gets it today. I would bet with you. I would put a crown on his head. Smith into the five. Richard Dent will be on the bottom of the pile with Mark Carrier. A gain you know, of six. You look at him and, and, and they don't hurt him. You know that tiny, remember as a kid, you know, you can't hurt me, you can't hurt me. I get the feel that when Emmett Smith plays that way, it's just he has that feeling, you can't hurt me. You can hit me, you can do everything, but you can't hurt me, and they can't. Two minutes to go in the first half. Nothing, nothing score. Many illustrious years with these Bears. Bears jump in and Smith hit behind the line by Richard Dent again. In fact, we just got word uh, that Alfredo Roberts has a sprained right knee. We saw him, of course, get injured. They took him off on the golf cart. They're down on the goal line now where they would usually go with two tight ends. The Cowboys only have two tight ends. Alfredo Roberts being the big awesome. blocking tight end, second tight end, and not in there. I think Bears that, jumped off sides. Yeah, that was Roper, and I think he jumped off sides because Troy Aikman changed the count. And you'll see... Number 55, he's going to jump off sides right there, and I think that was a, a starting count thing. Okay, now because they don't have Alfredo Roberts and they do this anyway, they're going to move big Kevin Gogan. He'll be the tight end. The guard we saw doing the blocking. In fact, Kevin Gogan's going over to the sideline with Aikman. Now maybe he's going to get a play. Frank Cornish, number 68, replaces Gogan as a guard. Gogan goes to tight end. Now he's going over there to get him some coaching. He may have to run a pass pattern. He is a tight end. You never know what you're going to have to do. 
So big old Gogan, he's over there meeting with the quarterback in them. Look, that, that, the, uh, Gogan, what are you doing here? <laughs> That jersey looks like it just barely, talk about meeting, just barely meets the pants. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a, you know, when, when you weigh 325, 330 pounds, and you want stuff tight, you wear stuff tight, you weigh 330, it never looks good. <laughs> but then again, when you weigh 330, Pat, everything's tight. That's true. Well, I think it's true. Yeah, well, they don't make loose stuff for guys that weigh 330. Now, uh, remember, he's going to be the tight end on the left. Now he's moving to the right. And if he gets open, which is hard to imagine, he'll be waving in the end zone. And the Bears are yelling, speed kills. Watch out for Gogan. <laughs> Smith down the line of scrimmage behind an attempted block by Daryl Johnson. A loss of a yard. He stopped by Zorich. You know, the other tight end is Alan Beingrad. He's playing the other side. But watch Gogan here block as a tight end. Right there, he doesn't look like a receiver now. When you block like that, you're not a receiver. He just took his guy, lifted him up, and put him right on his back. But the other tight end is Alan Beingrad, who's the left tight end, number 76. They don't know what to do. Well, they're confused. They don't know their pass patterns. Well, they... Poor old Gogan and Beingrad. It's the absence of Alfredo Robertson created all this. Now they got the receivers are probably going to pass the ball. Now they had to take time out. Gogan and Vinegrad, they don't know. They take Gogan and Vinegrad out. They get the receivers in. Confusion reigns, Pat. Take it easy. Now what they did really is they went from a running formation and then they went to a passing formation because it was third down, which was a passing down. They I took, would have just kept old Gogan oh, and sure. Feingrad in and thrown to them. They took uh, two out and put one in. That's not enough. Yep. See, and then Gogan again, when he goes from left guard, which is an ineligible position, to tight end, which is an eligible position, he has to come out for a play anyway before he goes back to guard. Right. See, Charles Haley's explaining that to him, and Gogan's explaining to him. A guy like a big old tackle, a guard like Gogan, they go over and they always say they're open. <laughs> Do you Haley's really think that's what's them. going on now, that they're explaining what's going on to each other? Well, no, what Haley's telling them is they didn't have to put Michael Irvin in the throw. They could have just thrown to you. Now they got two fullbacks. That's A.G. in motion. <laughs> Intended for Irvin incomplete. Covered by Wolford. Good well, coverage. Wolford finally won one. The poor guy on that drive. In fact, he's talking to the official back there. He had two interference penalties on that drive. I thought all three of them were good pass coverage, including that one. That's a good job. And he had a little help from Mike Singletary. I think that ball was coming in. Wolford was on one shoulder, and Singletary was zeroing in on him. Elliott will try from 21 yards away. Like an extra point. Except it's on the right hash mark. This one is good. And finally, numbers on the board. Dallas leads 3-0. 3-0 Dallas. Long drive by the Cowboys, 82 yards. 21-yard field goal by Elliott. 36 of those yards coming as a result of penalties. Elliott set to kick off. Him. I think uh, Wilford uh, did pretty well, though, in those coverage. And then it was interesting that third down pass was broken up by Wilford. No penalty was called, and the Cowboys had to settle for three. Lewis at the one. To about the 23, Derek Woodson and Clayton Holmes. Down to make the stop. Yeah, this is the thing that, that, that Jimmy Johnson likes about Darren Woodson here is is the way that they the, the way that they cover the way they hit the special teams that they just you know take on blockers guys are always all over them you can take on a big blocker come off and still make a tackle I mean, guys like Darren Woodson they don't start 
but they play a heck of a lot more than you think because they're on every special team and always on the nickel defense that the Cowboys are playing now on first down. Less than a minute left to play in the first half. Draw play. Neil Anderson. Second time we've seen him today. He played one other play on a passing situation. Leon Lett made the stop. Yeah, you know, there's a, a great running back, uh, Neil Anderson. He was replaced by Darren Lewis, and I'm not sure exactly what happened to Neil Anderson because I always thought that he was one of the better backs in the league when you take blocking, catching, running. He could do it all. Complete. And I don't know whether he got in Mike Ditka's doghouse or just lost something or whatever, but the last time he used to do the Bears, he was a great player. Oh, yeah. Pure. And brought it back and completes it to Anthony Morgan for a first down, Everett and Washington. Yeah, you know, it's going to be interesting, Pat, to see how the Cowboys play this second half. I know that Jimmy Johnson was talking about, you know, getting Steve Berline in there, but again, he wanted to finish crisp. He wanted to play crisp. His offense hasn't been crisp. So when does he make the change? When does he take a, a Michael Irvin out? You know, when does he take Emmett Smith? Obviously, he'll take Emmett Smith out when he breaks the record. But Steve Berline there, number seven, is going to play sometime today. He's a backup quarterback. He's the guy that, you know, really took him to the playoffs a year ago when Troy Aikman was hurt. And even the Cowboys don't expect that Berline is going to be back with them next year. Well, a lot of things are going to change. Uh, they like to keep him. They like to have Steve Berline stay here and I think he'd like to stay here but not necessarily as a total backup quarterback well like and can. Troy Aikman is too young and too good and you get bored just there, yeah. staying behind uh, Troy Aikman and and Berline's a competitor he wants to go and play someplace I went the Bears wouldn't be a bad place to go no I'll tell you the other place the, the, the Minnesota Vikings, they have a good team. They need a quarterback. Burline could really be the missing piece to that puzzle. Anderson on the draw play. Second effort. No, it happened. I think everyone thought he was down and uh, they didn't blow the whistle. So that's the end of the first half with the score. Dallas three. The Chicago Bears nothing. Barry Foster for the rushing title has 94 yards today he still needs 15 as Foster had another big day for the Steelers you know it was an interesting thing Pat what they did is they changed they gave Emmett Smith two more yards at halftime if you look here they call this a forward pass but it was a lateral right here when Aikman goes to throw the ball you can see here's Aikman and the ball and here's Emmett Smith so that in fact was a lateral so what they did at halftime is they added two more yards to Emmett Smith's rushing total because they had scored that a forward pass in the first half Elliott's kickoff to Lewis at about the one James direction chased out of bounds at about the 16 by Thomas Everett and Ken Gann the 17 yard line Halftime statistics show Dallas dominating. I'm a possession 1855, 10 first downs and yardage total. All belong to the Cowboys. And they lead three nothing. But they're not good numbers. Look at those no. passing yards. They've only passed for 51 yards, and this wasn't the kind of half that the Cowboys were thinking of. And I know they have a bye next week, uh, but I think you need better play than this going into the playoffs. I don't believe that you can just turn it on and turn it off anytime you want to do it. Cowboy offense did not turn it on other than Emmett Smith in the first half. It is still pure. And quarterback for the Bears, Tony Tolbert. Chase Lewis out of bounds, no game. You know, if you look at the Bear pass, you see Fury here. He was three for four to the left. He's a left-handed quarterback, 0 for 1 deep. In the middle, just okay. one for one, right. one for one deep. And over on the right side of the field, he only completed one pass. So, again, you expect that a rookie, a left-handed quarter, 
quarterback is going to throw more passes to his left. Of course, he threw all of them were to Anthony Morgan, and the other one was to his tight end, Keith Jennings. Second and ten. Durer has looked very confident. Pass whipped out to Darren Lewis. Out of bounds for a gain of about five by Norton. Yeah, that's the first one that he completed to a running back. And we watch the protection here on Russell Maryland. Maryland's trying to take an outside rush on Mark Bortz there. Bortz just catches him going to the outside and just drives him all the way out. That's good pass protection there by Mark Bortz. Like Maryland was probably playing run there and was trying to hit that gap against a sweep or something. And Bortz just took him all the way to the outside. Third and five. Three nothing Dallas. Pure lost quarter. his mouthpiece. You see that? He yep. dropped his feet, broke a huddle, and his mouthpiece fell on the ground. He had to go back and pick it up. Intended for Neil Anderson, Fuhrer, under fire. Uh, he's lucky that he got that mouthpiece back in there because, again, a passing down, you, you know the Cowboys today are going to come in the blitz. He had to get rid of the ball, and he did it just in time. Watch him. He knows the blitz is coming. He sees it. He looks downfield and just gets rid of the ball before Gant gets there. I think so, the Cowboys will probably blitz more in this game than they did all year. Gardaki's kick, left footed, is a good one. Kelvin Martin. Wonder when, uh, for trivia buffs, was the last oh, yeah, time yeah. a team had a left handed quarterback and a left footed punter? I don't know. That is, <laughs> that is a, a good one for trivia buffs. Another one for Buffs that thought that maybe Aikman would just play the first half. You're wrong. And when we talked again yesterday, Jimmy Johnson said that that Berline would play the second half unless things really didn't go well in the first half. And I think we just saw Jimmy Johnson's answer to what he thought about the offense in the first half. Aikman's still playing. So are the rest of the regulars. Here's Aikman back to throw it. First down, Donnell Wolford. Yeah, one thing here you see Wolford again has really been had 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 good coverage on Michael Irvin all day today. He's been close with everything. That time Irvin just beat him by a couple of yards. That's the thing with Irvin. You know, you know, he doesn't have the greatest speed in the world, but he has good body balance, good moves, and he's a big target. And he knows how to use his body. First down at midfield as Harper goes in motion. Emmett Smith. Moves the whole pile for about five yards. Six yards make it. Emmett Smith gets a little more. Yeah, the the thing that you get the feeling if you look where Aikman threw. And the first half, this is all under 15 yards. So you can see he was three for four, three for six, two for five. And then deep, he only threw two deep passes in the first half. So I think that's one thing that you have to do to this Bear defense. Anytime you play the Bears, you have to go deep. You have to loosen them up. You have to get them back off. And the Cowboys haven't done that. Emmett Smith now has 100 yards, second and four. <laughs> Wolford again. Good coverage. Yeah, the Cowboys must have had some scouting report that they wanted to work on Donnell Wolford. Richard Fain is a corner on the other side, and it seems like they've thrown very little on him, that everything that they've gotten to work on has been on their right side. I tell you, we said they ought to go deep, and they did go deep, and that is great coverage by Donnell Wolford. I think he's playing a heck of a game today. And Mike Ditka said last night he's playing the best of anyone. In the secondary. Yeah, and that's the guy that uh, it's interesting that the Cowboys have decided to pick on. I think I would try Richard Fain on the other side a little. Three wide receivers for the Cowboys. Oh, they tried. Not Richard Fain, but Lemuel Stinson. And picked up 13 with Irvin. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Just try the other side. 
Yeah, they, 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 they went to that right side all the time and things didn't go there, so they just go back to this side. As you say, it's Lemuel Stinson now, and he's given a little too much cushion to Michael Irvin over there. I would stay on that one, and Michael Irvin's probably walking back in the huddle, and he's telling Troy Aikman, hey, let me uh, stay and keep working on this left side here a little. He is chasing the yardage leader, Sterling Sharp of Green Bay, who's already finished and that lost to Minnesota. Did he have a great year, Sterling Sharp. Oh, I mean, here's him at Smith. Smith, touchdown. Into the tunnel. He might go get dressed. He will because he just broke the rushing record. Why come back? You got your record. He now leads the NFL. 20 carries, 131 yards. Back-to-back -back seasons as the NFL leading rusher. That ball will go in a trophy case. He'll take that one and lock that one up in a trunk today. He'll keep that one for a long time. He deserves it. What a player he is, Emmett Smith. Extra point good. He is the only cowboy to carry the ball today. Justifiably so. Mark Tuane is going to come off. That leaves Dent go. They're going to bring Daryl Johnson to fullback across to kick out Dent. The play is called bend right. Smith starts here and goes right back here to break the, break the record and do everything. Good block by Tuane. Great block by Daryl Johnston. And great running, of course, by Emmett Smith. That Nate Newton was up here in the booth with us, and he said that's called Ben Wright. And Daryl Johnston does trap the end man on the line of scrimmage. Nate says Emmett's in the zone now. And he is the NFL's leading rusher. See, now that's what they do with the ball. They put his number on it. That's Mike McCord. He's the assistant equipment man. He wants to be on the All-Madden team. I, I don't know. I mean, the guy whose ball went in there is going to be on the All-Madden team. Some of the guys who blocked for him are going to be in the All-Madden team. That guy definitely is the leader of the All-Madden <laughs> team. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, this isn't bad. You know, you talk about the most underrated cowboy right now. It's probably their left tackle, Mark Tuna. And certainly one of the toughest. Will Fuhrer to Morgan. Should be enough for a first down. Bears 11 yards. Larry Brown knocked him out of bounds. And yeah, Nate Newton just said up here, it's too bad that uh, Emmett Smith broke that record because he's in a zone today. Oh, Whatever zone great players get in, when they do things like this, you can see they really went, they balanced it out 10 times to the left for 94 yards. That's where he got most of his yardage. But he also ran 10 times to the right for 37 yards. And some of those were option. I mean, that last one started right and ended up left. And he still looks, as you pointed out earlier, very fresh. Fun line picked off in the air by Russell Maryland. And the people in Chicago and in Dallas love that one. He got to practice spiking a little bit and falling down a little bit. Yeah, but that's a lineman. That's a great one. Pat, look, look, he got falls. He's still got to call him flop. Big old lineman. They make touchdowns. They just flop. <laughs> that's the old Chicago flop. What's that one? He's a native of Chicago. Played high school football there. Wanted to play a big game today against the Bears. Look at that speed. And he's going to get a spike and a flop. Look, and over the shoulder, you can't beat that. And the old Chicago flop. And one thing about a lineman, a lineman, you have to love them, Pat. They go head first when they flop. Head first. They don't hit the stomach first or anything. Right, right, just stick the head right into the end zone. Boy, he, he just made some, some team with, with that dance. Whoa, that's a little different. It was 3-0 at the half, and all of a sudden it's 17-0. After that 23-yard return for a touchdown by Russell Maryland, his first NFL touchdown. You know, when he uh, grew up in Chicago, he really didn't want to play football. 
When he was in high school, he weighed like 320 pounds, and they nicknamed him the Frit. And he said he didn't like it. He also said he could have gone to Notre Dame on an academic scholarship as Lewis down to in the end zone. But he went and played football, and is he happy? He made the right choice. Yeah, they even. We, we talked about Emmett Smith, you know, every time he'd break records and he's leading leagues and, you know, breaking cowboy records. Now, this one's going away for Russell Maryland, too. Big old linemen don't get many opportunities to score, so Emmett Smith is there, and right next to it is Russell Maryland. Well, the way the season has gone for Dallas, they're going to have to get a bigger trunk. I know, but you still have to like that, uh, you know, that thing that he did there in the end zone. I mean, yeah. that up, he over, it. over the back spike, and then flop that first. Pure. In the direction of Morgan, a little too far, as he was under pressure again from Haley and Lewitt. You know, flag thing, on the play. Fuhrer might get blamed for that because, but it was a pretty good pitch. He pitched it to Darren Lewis, mm -hmm. and the ball was right there, and that ball just hit Darren Lewis on the shoulder pads, bounced up in the air, and Russell Maryland uh, uh, got it off of Darren Lewis's shoulder pads. Went right through Two his hands. Two on the defense. Defensive holding in the backfield. Pushing the foul, roughing the passer. Late hit, number 78. The roughing the passer will be accepted. 15, first down. Number 78 is big Leon Lett. Again, you see Fur throw the ball there. He's throwing it, he's standing, and Lett just tees off on him. That's the first penalty against the Cowboys. Yeah, that was a good call. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean the ball was gone. There was a thing you have to be able to, to pull up on that one. Lewis is split wide to the left this time. Change the play and get rid of it in a hurry. Too much of a hurry. Lewis was the intended receiver. Yeah, one thing that's happened to the Bears today, and it's happened to them all year, is they just can't run the ball anymore. In fact, all year they haven't had 100 yard rusher. And you take a Mike Ditka football team and the Bears, and it's always been based on the ability of the offense to run the ball in a dominant defense. And they don't have that this year, and they haven't had it the last couple of years. Well, they lost Jim Colbert, the fine left tackle. They lost Jay Hilgenberg this year. That's two out of five in the offensive line, and the rest have been playing with some hurts incomplete. Eric Wright. Well, and one of the big things, too, is they really don't have team speed. They, you know, you, you look at the Bears, and it's kind of like the Redskins a little. You, you feel that that they just don't have the speed that some of the other teams do. And I think Mike Ditka knows that. We're talking to him last night. And he says he knows what he needs. He needs more team speed. He needs a speedy outside receiver. He needs a couple corners. He needs a safety. He so said, he needs I, a couple linebackers. I need some show dogs. Yeah, he said, that's the problem. We don't have any show dogs. I need somebody we can show off. Now, there's a show dog. All right. But if you want someone that you can show off, the Emmett Smith, the Pro Bowl players, the Bears have no players in the Pro Bowl. Fuhrer goes deep. Morgan went short. Incomplete. But you know, in talking to Mike Ditka, I think he expects to be back. He doesn't sound like a coach who has given up. It doesn't sound like a coach who doesn't want to, uh, you know, still be here. He does want to be there. I think a lot of it's going to be up to what Mike McCaskey decides. But this guy has always been a coach. He is still a coach. He's a heck of a coach. Mike McCaskey will make that decision. There are other mountains to climb, is what Dick has said. This is Kelvin Martin with room. Back down at midfield. A good return. Fumble at the end. Blackwell knocked the ball loose. And I believe Dallas got it back. 48-yard punt, a 40-yard return. So Dallas gets it back in good shape, leading 17-0. 17-0 Dallas over the Bears. Kelly Blackwell, number 89, comes in, makes a tackle, strips the ball. Looked like the Bears had a chance to get it, but Clayton Holmes, number 47, recovers the fumble. And a new quarterback for the Cowboys, Steve Burline, new running back, Irvin Richard. 
Summer all with John Madden at Texas Stadium where the Cowboys trying to win the most games ever for a Cowboy team. That would be 13. You know, and I think that was one of the things Jimmy Johnson wanted to do is explode a little. They were ahead three to nothing at halftime. And then they came back in the second half and exploded with two quick touchdowns. And so he figured, okay, that's good enough. We're a little more crisp than we were. Let's start making some change. Richards, two yards. Number 27. You know, the Bears have yet to cross the 50-yard line. You look at the, the time of possession here. The first half, 18.55. And then in the second half, in two minutes, they got 14 points. Took them down near 19 minutes to get three. <laughs> couple of minutes to get 14 and of course the big thing in that is Emmett Smith and his great run Daryl Johnston trap on that Ben Wright and uh, the rushing record and all the things that go with that Herman and Harper still the wide receiver That's the Harper. to the 15 stop by Ryan Cox David Tate a pickup of 17 one thing right now, when you take out a Troy Aikman and you put in a Steve Berline, you're looking at the best backup quarterback in football. You're looking at a, a quarterback who can be a starter on probably 75% of the teams in this league. In fact, he proved last year he could be a starter on this team and take the team to the playoffs, which he did when Troy Aikman was injured. And likely he will be a starter somewhere next year. Yeah, because his contract is up, and I think the... Cowboys know that they would like to have him, but they're probably not going to have him. Irvin and Moses. Down inside the 10. A pickup of five. Number 49, David Tate on stop. Like Harper might have been shaken up a little bit on that last pass completion from Burline. In fact, he left his mouthpiece on the ground. Second and five. Richards to the eight. Singletary made the stop, a gain of three. You know, Jimmy Johnson always liked uh, Kervin Richards. In fact, you know, you know, he always said that he would probably play more, but you never want to take Emmett Smith out of the game. But if you did, he's not afraid to put Kervin Richards in. And before the game, he was down there in the field telling Richards he's going to play today. But he wants him to hit the holes quick and slash. He told him slash and dash when you get in there today. And Emmett Smith never wants to come out of the game. No, and if you had Emmett Smith, there'd be no reason to ever take him out of the game. Right. I mean, they'd have to give you, I mean, if you were a coach and you took Emmett Smith out of the game in a normal competitive game, they'd, they'd give you an MRI. Berline let the 30-second clock run down, the 25-second clock run down to one, and then he took a timeout. 17-0, Cowboys lead. And that'll be some game we have with the Philadelphia Eagles playing in New Orleans against the Saints. The Saints have been tough anywhere all year, but in that dome, I'll tell you, they're a tough team to play. Lewis stays in the end zone. Here's the Cowboy touchdown. Well, you'll see Kervin Richards is going to start the ball. He's going to start to his left. And then you see right here, he starts to this side. Then he's going to cut it back. He sees this hole right here, and he's going to cut it back to this side. See that? He starts it to the left and then just bends it right back to the right. That's what the play is called, Ben Wright. His first NFL touchdown. And that'll probably go in that box in the trunk place in that trunk. We got Emmett Smith's there where he led the league in rushing. We got Russell Maryland, his first touchdown, and Kirvin Richards, his first touchdown. Zero, thank you, throw. Gets it outside to Anderson incomplete. Hit by Dixon Edwards. 
Edwards in the penalty for the Cowboys. Those are two guys that Jimmy Johnson says that he wanted to get in today. It was Dixon Edwards and Godfrey Miles, the other a linebacker. Said he'd like to get them in some work. You know, they play special teams, but they haven't gotten them in much at linebacker. And he thinks that Edwards is probably as good as his starting linebackers, but they just haven't had an opportunity to play him that much. Not they much like to see him today. And there's Miles playing the other side. That's Neil Anderson. After a three yard pick up by Tony Tolbert. And Mike Singletary. You wonder what's going through Mike Singletary's mind now. And like he said, he told the team last night his career with the Bears has been like a bell curve. Started low, went to the top of that 85 season, the pinnacle. He said he's going out on a low. But he wanted today uh, to be a win. He wanted to go out and make it fun to dominate. Those things didn't happen, but that's not going to affect a great career that Mike Singletary's had. He had five tackles today. Anderson alone set back, pure to throw it. Complete to Wendell Davis. And that'll move the chains for the Bears. 14-yard pickup stopped by Thomas Everett. You know, Wendell Davis, if he would have thought about running, I think he could have broke that thing. Looked like he was thinking about going down, and the Cowboy tacklers really didn't put him down. He could have just broken that thing and run right through it. The Bears, I don't think, have crossed midfield yet today. So that could be a big thing right here. If, if they can complete a pass and get across midfield, that will have broken a Texas milestone <laughs> this Sunday after Christmas. That's a sad milestone. Here they come after Fuhrer again. The pass is picked off by James Washington. Washington still running. And down at about the 38. No Texas milestone. Now they've been going after Fuhrer all day. As I said, the Cowboys are not a blitzing team. But we've seen them bring linebackers like this. We've seen them bring corners. We've seen them bring safeties. We knew going into the game that they were going to do it. And I think when they saw Will Fuhrer start today, they really decided to double up on it. You know, John, in that year of 1985, if you were talking about when the Bears were so dominant, here's the interception again. They beat the Cowboys 44 to nothing on the way to the Super Bowl that year. Yeah, that was the year that we did like seven or eight Cowboy games, and we never saw a touchdown scored against them. Bear games. Bear games. Right. I mean, those, those, that fair defense that year, that 85, was probably the most dominant defense I've ever seen. Pass intended for Irvin. Now they want him to get that yardage leadership. Verline oh, slow getting up. Yeah, and I think... I think Verline is hurt on that one. I mean, one thing, one thing about the Cowboys, you know that they only have two quarterbacks, and Verline is going to take the hit quite a bit after he throws that ball by Zorich and and you know that that once Aikman is out he takes his pads and stuff off he isn't going to go back in in fact Troy Aikman is is smiling he's tucking his jersey in, but he doesn't want to go back he in. may have to Aikman knows it Berline knows that though too Berline and Richards Richards will have a cowboy first down stopped by Carrier and you know who else knows it is the offensive coordinator of the Cowboys who's done such an outstanding job, North Turner. And I would think that North Turner may keep the ball on the ground more than uh, I would think so. Uh, he intended to. One, you'll get the game over with uh, uh, more quickly, and two, you won't subject a quarterback to, uh, to any beating. Here's Norv on the left side of the picture. Yeah, there's Norv right there. What a job he's done. I mean, he came to this. Cowboy team as the offensive coordinator. In fact, he's helped Troy Aikman so much that Troy Aikman was telling us yesterday that he gave Norv a Christmas present for he and his wife. He's going to fly him to Hawaii for a vacation. Burline out to Richards. Richards needs a 20. Roper stopped him after a gain of six. 
Yeah, we're talking about North Turner and oh, what he did or what he's done or what he's doing with Troy Aikman. If you look in his first two years, his completion average was 54.9, which is pretty good. And his last two years, since North Turner, that guy right there has been there, his completion average is 64.8. He's thrown 34 touchdowns and 24 interceptions. So North Turner has really helped Troy Aikman. You know, you think about uh, this Cowboy coaching staff, and the name you hear most often is that of Dave Wonstadt, who runs the defense. But certainly North Turner would have to be considered. And it's something that Jimmy Johnson encourages too. Yeah. I think I think that Dave Wonstadt is going to be a head coach maybe this year. I mean, if he's not a head coach this year, the defensive Very coordinator ready. of the Cowboys, he's going to be one next year. Like it looked like there's going to be some jobs open. Looks you know, like it. New York Giants, uh, Denver a possibility. There's talk about the Bears. Talk about New England. Yeah, something has to be done up there in New England. But, you know, here with the Bears, I mean, the, to me, you know, the Bears are down. They need some players. And they have to go out and get in the free agency market and compete, get some more speed on their team. And I cannot believe that Mike Ditka is not the guy to do it. I cannot picture the Bears without Mike Ditka as their coach. I think he's good for the Bears. He's good for Chicago. He's good for the NFL. I think we need more Mike Ditkas rather than fewer. And you know, the more he talked last night, the more he got into what he needed and who was playing well and so on and so forth, the more he started talking about next year. And there's the man who will make the decision. Yeah, that's Mike McCaskey, and uh, he's going to make the decision as to whether to keep Mike Ditka or not. Mike says he doesn't really want control or power. He just wants everyone to be on the same page. Richards uh, struggled. Maybe he got the first down. Maybe he did. Single Terry again to make the stop. Richards. Say no game. You know they had that dominant defense we were talking about in 1985, where we saw them and they didn't. You know, no one could score a touchdown against them, including this Cowboy team. And then as they lost those players, they never replaced them with dominant players. You know, Dent is still right. there, Singletary's still there, but the other guys were average players replacing in sometimes dominant or great players. With the exception maybe of uh, Steve McMichael, who Ditka was saying again, is having probably the best year of all of them. Field goal line drive is good from 34 yards out. It's been a shaky day for the Dallas kicker, but that was good nevertheless. And, 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 and you wonder how good Jimmy Johnson feels about Lynn Elliott because you're getting ready for the playoffs. You got a rookie kicker. He's probably been worried about it all year. He's had his ups and downs with him, mostly ups. Then you get here at the end of the season and your kicker is kicking those balls low and having a tough time getting in the goalpost and you're going into the playoffs, this would give you a little worry. Your guy like Jimmy Johnson, you're always trying to find something to worry about. And I think when your kicker starts kicking low ones, that's something to worry about. Well, he'll have an extra week because the Cowboys have the bye. They'll host a playoff game here after the week off. And they have everything going. I mean, yeah. they have the number one defense. They play team defense well. They got the, the offense. It has a good offensive line. Troy Aikman, a great quarterback, Emmett Smith. And when you put everything together, one of the best running backs in all of football, Michael Irvin, Harper's coming along, Jay Novacek. I mean, they have so many things that they can do and so many ways to go. They are a nightmare to defend. Elliott's kickoff. Darren Lewis at about the one. Struggles to the 24. Vincent Smith made the stop. Mike Singletary getting a little bit of a rest. He made six tackles. You know, he said yesterday after practice, after the final practice, that guy to his right is Richard Dent. After practice, they all jumped on him. Williams got him down. Then Dent started jumping on him. McMichael jumped on him. The whole defensive line jumped on him. 
and how to feel him. So, well, it was okay. He didn't even have any pads on, but yeah, they that, all was, that was the way they show their respect. The only reason we did it was because we loved him. Yeah, that's different. And football players do things in different ways. <laughs> Richard Dent, who was sitting right next to Mike Singletary, says we did it because we love you. We saw Russell Maryland celebrate by going head first into the turf. And you know it's a memory too for the Richard Dent. You know it's not only Mike Singletary's last Both game. Both sides before the snap. Number 73, offense, five yards, still first down. So it's going to be against the Bears. But it, you know it's 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 first the last the time that Bears. Richard Dent ever plays with Mike Singletary or Steve McMichael or William Perry. You know it's the last time they play together. So it's big and it's emotional for Singletary, but it's big and emotional for. Guys like Armstrong and Dent and Perry and all the rest of the guys that have played so many years with us. It's Mark Green this time, the ball carrier for the Bears. Pick up a five, stopped by Thomas Everett. Number 31, Mark Green. Yeah, you know, then you wonder what's going to happen to Harbaugh. You know, he's been the you know the quarterback, and in fact, that's one of the things I think between uh, Mike McCaskey and Mike Ditka is is McCaskey believes that Harbaugh is a great quarterback and he's the quarterback now for the Bears he's a quarterback of the future and then of course they start Will Fury so you know something has to give in that area too no question about it second and ten Will Fury is still the quarterback Like Mike Dicker was saying that maybe Jim Harbaugh's confidence will be helped by not starting. He started Peter Tom Willis two games and again Will Fuhrer here today. So you know I know a guy like Harbaugh I know Jim Harbaugh and he's going to say you know not playing will never help me. That's not how I get confidence. I get confidence by playing. I already have confidence just let me play. Not today. And maybe their season started to turn around on that famous interception against the Minnesota Vikings. So that could have been the You had to think that was one of the turning points. Here's Fuhrer back to throw. Pass complete. To Anthony Morgan. Still going, but a flag on the play. On the far side of the field. Larry Brown finally Brown. Up. James Washington there with an assist. Yeah, you, hope, to 40, you hope it's not against the Bears, Pat, because it's the first time they got across the 50 in the area where it is. It's probably going to be against the Bears. But we have a penalty down there against the Bears and an injured player on the 30. That's Morgan. Right offensive right guard. There were two seconds on the clock when the foul occurred. Please put two seconds on the clock. That was against, the, what did he say, the right offensive right guard? <laughs> That's what he said. Two rights. Anthony Morgan, because he was a guy who caught the ball. We're checking his left shoulder. See, they said that the right guard moved. And you'll see that you know he, he makes the throw there to Morgan, and then Morgan is still down after the tackle. 27 to nothing. There's Anthony Morgan, the story on him. And you think back and look around the NFL and you see all the wide receivers, most of them with great speed from the University of Tennessee. You know, again, here was what they're calling right here. If the right guard moved before the ball is snapped, you can see the ball through the center's leg. I don't think so. I think that looked pretty good. That looked like the guy was just getting off the same time the ball was. That was a close look to call that. Yeah, that's a rookie, Jay Lewenberg, number 58. One of the guys that Mike Ditka thinks is going to be a, a good offensive lineman. One of the guys who, you know, he said he wanted to see play today. He thinks he has enough offensive linemen in Lewenberg and big Lewis Age and James Williams, who they moved over from defense to offense that the bear offensive line can change. They have enough bodies there to be pretty good. Stan Thomas, he thinks he can be a guard. And here's here's part of the, the group here. You talk about a guy, look at that number 79, Lewis Age. 
He weighs 350 pounds. Six seven. Now that, and they may play him a guard. Now that is a guard. That's, that's bigger than old Gogan. Pure pass incomplete. Wendell Davis, the intended receiver. Cowboy player, I think not hurt, just upset that he didn't come up with an interception. Ken Norton. Yeah, I mean, imagine putting that 79 in there at guard. I mean, how would, how would you go around that thing? That would make you age. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean well, here I mean, you are, and, and then there. you get them there in the pits with the center, and then then how'd you like to be a defensive back and see old big yeah. Lewis Age pulling? Got a little 170-pound <laughs> cornerback. And I'll tell you, you get down quick. Gardaki's putt is a good one. Martin signals fair catch and makes it at about the 31. And that's the end of the third quarter. With the score, Dallas 27, Chicago nothing. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. The stadium, Pat Summerall with John Madden. Dallas 27, the Bears nothing as we begin the fourth quarter. Dallas owner Jerry Jones just stopped by to say hello. Yeah, he had Very a big happy. smile on his face, didn't he? He's wishing happy holidays and all that stuff. And when you're ahead 27 to nothing, you have the best record that the Cowboys have ever had in their history. You walk around with a lot of smiles in your face. Pass complete to AG. For seven yards from Burline. Stopped by Marcus Paul. You know, you just think four years ago, there weren't many smiles on anybody's face around here, including Jerry Jones. Yeah, that's right. And then they come in and everyone says, you know, Jerry Jones, what's he doing bringing in Jimmy Johnson? He's a college guy. They don't know what they're doing. Well, I think they proved to the people in Dallas and to the people in the entire National Football League that they really do know what they're doing. In that doing. period of four years, they have gotten themselves into a situation where Everybody else is starting to say we need to be like them. Yeah, well, they went out and they did the right things. They know they didn't have the players, so they went out and they got players. And the big thing they did, they went out and they got speed. Oh, picked up by the Bears. And so the Bears recover at the Cowboys 30-yard line. Ron Cox got the good bounce. Hey, you're going to see Ron Cox. He's number 54 at the end of the line. He's coming on a blitz anyway. So he's going to be in the right place at the right time. Tommy A.G. was going to block him. They were trying to kick him out, and everything happened right there. Hey, this is the first time now. This will be the first time that the Bears crossed the 50. So they got some, some good field position here. Got some of those young offensive linemen in there. You see Stan Thomas now at right tackle. Lewenberg next to him. I want to see age in there. I want big Lewis age to get in there. That's Mark Green, the ball carrier, tried it back against the green, stopped by Leon Lett. Yeah, Leon Lett uh, is, has really become a pass rusher, but he's he's so big and strong. You just watch him here that that he can play anything. I mean, he gets in there and, and he's just about impossible to block. I mean, he has size, he has quickness, he has strength, he has everything. And you say, Leon Lett, where did he come from? Emporia State, a small school, but someday everyone is going to know about Leon Lett. First time the Bears have been in Dallas territory. Pass is picked off by Miles. And he's still on his feet. And back to about the 28-yard line where the Cowboys will take over. Tenant for Kelly Blackwell. That's one of the players that Jimmy Johnson said yesterday he wanted to look at. And that'll put a vote in his column. 13 rushing yards. Leads now the NFL. Total yards. The Bears have 86. The Cowboys 268. Dallas got 24 quick points. There. Wonder at some point those guys had to say, well, this is what I'm going to wear today. <laughs> and at some point they're going to have to say, yep, yep, this is it. I look good. Everybody keeps saying they've improved the equipment. <laughs> 
How do you get to it's that lighter. point, though? <laughs> and Troy Aikman is thinking, I don't, I don't want to be any part of that. He won't even look. I mean, they got guys dressed up like women saying Troy ate, and he wants no part of it. <laughs> and in fact, he has a, 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 a drummer here from the uh, group Shenandoah. Right. He's a big fan of Shenandoah. He travels on the bus with them. And the drummer from Shenandoah is here today. So is the Masters champion, Freddie Couple. As a guest of Bill Bates. That was nice. We went out to the Dallas Cowboy practice yesterday, and in comes Bill Bates with Fred Couples, and Fred Couples is, is at this game today. And Bill Bates, he hasn't won the Masters yet. Oh, he's he's won a he's won a lot of contests though with guys trying to block him when he's yeah. running down on a kickoff. Remember when he was in grammar school, they nicknamed him Bully Billy Bates, and then he he comes out always one of our favorites. Well, he's yeah. always excelled on special teams. Uh, I remember how proud uh, we were. He's been one of the all mad guys for years, and they had triplets. Is intercepted by Wolford. A flag on the play. Back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you know, there's been one bright spot. However, this turns out for the Chicago Bears today, it's been Danell Wolford. I mean, he's had a couple penalties against him, but I thought they were good coverage. Illegal use of hands. Number 76 offense. Penalty decline. First down. When things go wrong. Well, you see going here, right here. I'm sorry. He's still going against Michael Irvin. Yeah, that was called against the Pow uh, Cowboys in Vinegrad. But again, that's what Wolford did earlier. He cut he cut Irvin off and he had a penalty because he had some contact with him. That time, Berline looked at Michael Irvin too long, and Danell Wolford got a real good jump on that ball. Now, this is the second time all day the Bears have been on this side of the 50-yard line. The last time, of course, was just a couple minutes ago when they threw an interception. The fans, those who remain, want to shut out. The ball at six. First and goal, and it's touchdown Bears by Mark Green. Six yards away. Uh, you know, Mark Green gets that touchdown, but that's one you have to give to Wolford. Wolford right. has had a tough day covering Harper and covering Irvin all day. He's done an excellent job. He got the interception that put him in position to run that play. That was a trap play. There, there's still, I don't know, something happened to Wolford after that interception. And he looked like he limped off the field. Yep. Like I said, he's been one yeah, oh bright boy. spot for this Bear team. The extra point is good by Kevin Butler. And another of those, you have to wonder about what's going to happen with Kevin Butler. Back at Texas Stadium, the proud home of the Dallas Cowboys again. I think we got an onside kick coming up here, Pat. I think so. Well, look at this. We got a play. It's a play. Look at that. Load left. Who's going to kick right, it? Load left. Gardaki kicks it finally. A flag on the play. Back at the line of scrimmage. That's Clayton Holmes with the ball. Back out to about the 47, 28 yard line. But a penalty marker down. It was a trick. It was a good one. They had two kickers in there. Yep. Now there's a trivia question. When's the last time you saw two kickers on one team on the same kickoff, one right footed and one left footed? And did they did either one of them make the tackle? And is it a legal play? Watch it. Here's it as a replay. Look, you load to the right. Shift. So someone yells, shift, shift. Two of those guys are kickers in the middle. You say, who's going to kick? It's a fake. Here comes the other guy. He kicks. And all that for naught because it was a penalty. The Cowboys declined it. And they're going to take the ball. They don't want to have to see that one again. Looked like somebody just let class out. Well, that's Danny Abramowitz. He's the uh, he's the special teams coach now of the Bears. That's that's an uh, Abramowitz original. Furlines from Curvin Richards. 
A pickup of three yards stopped by Zorich and Rivera. Getting back to the Bears again. And those who have been playing well, he says Chris Zorich has really started to come on. In fact, he practices so hard that he makes those around him look better. Yeah, and that's what he says that you know you have to calm him down in practice because Zorich only knows one way to play, and that's going full speed all the time. And and you know you need players like that. I mean, those players will always get themselves better, and they get other guys better. Zorich. No, 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 no. What I do? Look, look, he's trying to tell the crowd, let's go. There's Big Spellman, man. You get 285 pounds, you're only 5% body fat. Better not mess with him. You got like size 18 shoes on him. And skinny. Yeah, Zorich started it, then he walked away. Spellman says, I want some of that. We come here to hit. Let's hit. Want to go? We'll go. <laughs> There's Chris Zorich. Yeah, he was. Mike Ditka wanted to draft him in the first round. They didn't draft him in the first round. They got him in the second round. And from the time he was drafted or in college, he was one of Mike Ditka's favorite. Mike Ditka has always liked Chris Zorich. Look at him, he got signals to the referee. Tell me what I did. Boy's side, now they're on the Bears' side. Look at Emmett. There's a guy who looks like he just won a league rushing title and is finished for the day. I think when you put on the baseball cap, you take off the shoulder pads and put the jacket on, you've had a great day. You know, look, look at him. You compare him, his first three seasons with Tony Dorsett. And you see what kind of great back Evan Smith is. This is A.G. A penalty marker on the play, but let's go back to Emmett Smith for a minute. Well, you, well, you know, we were talking about him the way you compare his first three years, and it seems like he's been in the league longer than that, leading rusher two of those years. Look how he compares to Walter Payton. Walter Payton in his first three years gained 3,000. He gained 4,200. Payton's average was 4.6. Emmett Smith's is 4.3. Walter Payton had 34 touchdowns. And you compare him to Jim Brown. Look at that. I mean, he's had more yards than Jim Brown, more carries, less average, and one more touchdown. So he compares favorably to cowboy backs of the past, to and backs that are going to be in the Hall of Fame like Walter Payton. And backs that are in the Hall of Fame, like Jim Brown. Great players. And he certainly deserves to be in that category, too. Four yards for Richards. The 1992 leading rushers, Smith, is the rushing champion, depending, of course, what happens to Thurman Thomas tonight. But he'd have to have one heck of a night, wouldn't he? Yeah, he sure would. No, he's won the he's won the Russian title. Barry Foster uh, had an amazing year for Pittsburgh. A second, Thurman Thomas, uh, you know, having a great year also. Barry Sanders, maybe the best pure running back. Terry Allen of Minnesota. You know, an interesting fact: there's never been a player to lead the league in rushing and win a Super Bowl. That's amazing. That's the good news, bad news. The yeah. good news is you lead the league in rushing. The bad news is no one's ever won. Holy moly! Well, it's Zorich. Burline down, and Zorich is going to score. Touchdown for the Bears. Now, that's a good spike. Hey, that's the same type of touchdown that Russell Maryland got. Yep. This is a big day for defensive tackles. Big day for defensive tackles. And if you're a defensive tackle, all you do is laugh about it. <laughs> they can't a big believe laugh. It. A big laugh. This is great. Well, you can be a guy, and you're usually there in the pits as defensive tackle. You know, they're usually down there in the pits, and nothing happens. They get double team and triple beam. That ball came off, hit him right in the face. Then bounced down, bounced right back up to him. Zorich put the ball in the right hand. See that? You always put it in the outside hand, which was his left hand. 
Afterburners. The yes, guy got did. some speed. Watch him. He's going to come here. Then the ball's going to hit him in the head. Bounce up to him. Now watch. He puts the ball in the outside thing. In case you get hit and you fumble, the ball will go out of bounds. Zorich knows that. He's going all the way. <laughs> and I'll tell you, for a defensive tackle, that doesn't look like a long run. You take that run and that spike. Man, you need something to help you out. You get so, tired. Yeah, you go over and you get you some oxygen. Woo! That'll take all the wind out of you. You see what he did? Take a little shower. Yeah, he, he spiked the ball, spiked the oxygen thing, and then threw two bottles of water on him. Prevent. Where they have nine men up in front and just two men halfway deep. And the Bears are going to switch something. I mean, they're going to do something and switch. You see the Cowboys, they have that whole group up in front. That's called their hands team. And the Bears, you would expect some kind of onside kick. Well, we didn't get it. Gardaki kicks it through the end zone and out, and they'll bring it back to the 20. Today's game was produced by Bob Stinner and directed by Sandy Grossman. The coordinating producer of the NFL today is Eric Mann. The NFL today was directed by Duke Strzok. And the senior producer of the NFL on CBS is Ed Gorin. Those things, those brand new balls will leave a mark where you sit on them. Did you notice that on Thayer there? Oh, they said, that's the end of these guys. Let's get them out of here. And it by the convenient handle. Tommy A.G. No gain. Pull it on, tripping up the aisle. <laughs> no, that that's won't. the last we're going to see of those guys. <laughs> you want to bet? <laughs> this will be the last I'm going to see of them. <laughs> now, I'll bet you Troy Aikman doesn't want to see them. <laughs> no. But you Shannon Doa doesn't want to see them. I bet you Freddie Couples doesn't want to see them. Jimmy Johnson doesn't want to see them. Mike Ditka doesn't want to see them. Keep going. <laughs> Jerry Jones doesn't want to see him. Nova check the receiver. Rutabagas don't want to see him. <laughs> Turnips. Turnips don't want to see him. <laughs> now, this is something you don't see a lot. Running backs, three touchdowns today. Of course, Emmett Smith, one of the all-time greats. But big old defensive tackles, two touchdowns today. Man, that does your heart good. I mean, that makes you be proud because... Those guys spend so much time in the pits. Like, I mean, Zorich is still tired from that 42-yard <laughs> run. He's still huffing and puffing. That takes a lot out of a guy who's used to taking one step and getting zapped by two guys. Third, third and five. Furline back to throw it. Martin, first down at the 35. David Tate on the stop, a gain of 10. You see that play there, Zorich, you know, after he was tired, he had that big run, then he got double teamed. Usually get double teamed in there on everything, the run and the pass protection. Watch him, he's going to be right here, and he's just going to get, you see, you get the guard on him, and then you get the center on him, then you get everyone on him. Those guys, they don't know what they're doing in there, and then they get a ball and they get touchdowns, and he can get tired just carrying those arms around. If, if you had to pack those arms around, you could, <laughs> yeah. you could breathe heavily. You could say the same thing about Spellman. Yeah, but he only has 5% body fat, whatever that is. Uh, draw play to A.G. Got a couple of yards, stopped by Zorich and Spellman. Two of the future players, maybe stars, they hope, well, of the Danelle, Bears. Danelle Wolford had a great three quarters. And after that, I think Zorich has really taken over this game. And Spellman has played all over. He's been a defensive tackle and a, and a defensive end. But, uh, you know, he's the guy, as you say, he's going to be the future of this fair defensive line. Spellman, Zorich, those guys. Trace Armstrong is still a young guy. He's sure. only a fourth-year guy. Second and eight. Lost the ball. The Bears have it. David Tate. Tate finally still on his.
his feet. I don't think he went down. I don't think he did. He might have gone out of bounds, but I don't think he went down. Stepped out of bounds way back. You know, it was funny when I saw that, when I saw Tate come in here, I thought he was taking a cheap shot. I, I, I thought he was swinging like his right forearm at him, trying to hit him in the head, and he came up with the football. The receiver is down by contact at this point. First down. Well, no interception. They say that Harper was down by contact, and so it's a Dallas first down. Yeah, you watch David Tate come in there. David Tate is number 49. He's right there in the in the middle of the picture. Burline starts back. He throws a good pass here. Now the ball just comes out before he goes down. That wasn't down. No. He took the ball out before he went down. Now they've changed it. Oh, now he got it. Now he got it straightened because that was right. Just watch him. See, he doesn't go down. Watch Tate come in here. See, I, I thought he was going to hit him in the head. He grabbed the ball with his left hand out of Harper before Harper ever went down. Look at the French Perry. He's telling him, go, 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 go like Zorich. Zorich ran faster than Tate. Well, watch his move right here. Rolls over the pile, back up on his feet. All the way to the end zone, but it drilled an interception back at the 41-yard line. The last four times the Cowboys have had the ball, they've turned it over. That's not the way to go to the playoffs. Fuhrer chased out of the pocket, gets rid of it. And the pass is intercepted by Kevin Smith. And now he's a, an excited young man. Not him, Smith. Four turnovers apiece today. Hey, there is a rookie who has become a veteran during the season. Kevin Smith. He started at left corner. He started at right corner. As Jimmy Johnson said, the guy is a playmaker. And I think that he is going to be tested in the playoffs. But I think that he can win some of those tests. They've got a lot of guys who are playmakers. They're going to be dangerous in the playoffs. Yeah, Kevin Smith, you know, he had a pair of gloves that he wore in Texas A&M for four years. There was lucky gloves. He lost them, and he's been trying to find a new pair of lucky gloves. A.G. the tailback. It's down to about the 46. A gain of four stopped again by Zorich and Rivera. Rivera playing the middle linebacker. Position vacated by... Mike Singletary. Yeah, you talk about Zorich being in on every play in practice. He's playing this second half like it's a practice. But he's been in every play there. He's been scoring touchdowns. He's been stopping runs. He's been pass rushing. I say, well, what more do you want from a guy? Second and six. He's trying to find some oxygen. You know, in this artificial turf, you don't get any ox oxygen out of the grass. And it does get hot. Plus those uh, five guys they just took out of here took some oxygen with them. To about the 41-yard line, stopped by John Roper. A gain of five for A.G. Normally a fullback, but as you see, he can also play tailback. And you know, of all the things that are bad about artificial turf, you know, the injuries and the foot getting caught and all that stuff, there's some other thing. I mean, it's harder because it's just cement under there. Uh, this isn't a good carpet. This is a worn out carpet here in Dallas. And like I said, you know, out of, out of grass, you get oxygen. And when you just have plastic and carpet, you don't get any. That's why you never see many guys take a knee and try and get their head down on artificial turf. All you're gonna get is some dust. There's Blitz, big by Burline. Pass complete to Novichok. About the 20. Richard Payne knocked him out. Chris Zorich, by the way, has had six tackles since he's been playing. It's going to be first down for the Cowboys at about about the 13. See, Berline goes on that bootleg. He fakes to his back, going to the left, and then he rolls out to the right. Then you get the tight end coming from the way the back fakes. So that really fouls up linebackers. The back gets him going one way, then the tight end, in that case, Jay Novacek, 
comes across them as they're going towards the back and the quarterback bootleg. And if you got all that, put it on a chart. Jay Novacek leading all the tight ends in the NFL. In the to the 10. Stopped again by Zorich. That's Mike Singletary a minute ago. If somebody said go in the game, you think he's not ready? Did you notice how his look changed, yeah. though? I mean, he looked he looked like he was kind of, you know, talking to guys, and someone said something like, go in, and he got that look, that look yeah. that we've seen over the years a million times. And he's the middle linebacker, second and seven. Cowboys at the Bear, 10-yard line. Johnson in motion, the handoff to A.G. A.G. down to about the five. Stopped by Ryan, number 29, number 99. Yeah, where's Zorich? He ought to get in there. There he is. Yeah, 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 he, yeah he, finally got, he finally got in there. You know, Zorich has been in on everything else. You know he's going to get in on a little scrape. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League and CBS telecast intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys, CBS, and the National Football League is prohibited. This is a bare timeout. Dallas has the ball at the five. Well, you wonder what guys think of when it's their last game and the Bears and once this game is over you know they all go home the Cowboys side of course they're all thinking playoffs well you wonder if you're a Chicago Bear who's going to be back and who's not going to be back whether it's going to be Ditka if you're a player will I be back you know he won't be back and you know, I mean, here you are, someone calls you, you get up there in the sideline, you're still waiting to go in if your team needs you. Of course, they have that patch there that he's wearing. That's in honor of Mike Singletary. They've been wearing that the last three games. There he goes, he's going in. So he's is taking his buddies with him in the fridge. Right. And Morrissey. Fame. Wolford. Here's Every middle linebacker has to have a goal line stand. Here's one last goal line stand for Mike Singletary. Third and two. AG hammers down to a first down for Dallas. Zorich and Perry made the stop. Three yard pickup. We're going to have a two minute warning. Two minutes left with Dallas leading 27 14. Goal line stand. That could be tough. Novacek on the move. The handoff is to AG. Stop right at the line of scrimmage. Sean Gale. I'll let the defense. For those of you expecting to see 60 Minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS, the game between the Bears and the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Pat Summerall along with John Madden. Our score here is 27-14, the Cowboys leading. 60 Minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following this game, except on the West Coast and the Mountain Time Zone. Emmett Smith for the Cowboys. As Berline kneels down, Emmett Smith Got enough yards to lead the NFL in rushing. There he is. Off with the pads. Off with the hat. Well, in the back. On with the hat. Sorry. The NFL leader in rushing, Emmett Smith. Off with the socks. I hope it stops somewhere. Oh, and of course, he's going to be the winner. He's the. He led the league in rushing this year. Last year he led the league in rushing, and he'll be crowned again today the rushing leader in the NFL, which is a real feat not only for Emmett Smith, but for all his teammates. Again, Berline. Richard Dent with a big.
Nick Hook for Mike Singletary. Defending that goal line. As he has done so often. And we here at CBS wish him the best. And him too. So they run it out. And run out the regular season of 1992 as the Cowboys won it 27-14.